Hey guys, what's up? My name is Eric and I'm the Techie Agent and today we're taking a look at the Garmin VivoFit 4. So the VivoFit 4 is Garmin's entry-level fitness tracker ringing in at the time of this video at a $79 price tag. And I'll put a link in the description below where you can check out the product on Amazon for the latest pricing information. Now in terms of cosmetics, the VivoFit 4 is essentially unchanged from the previous generation VivoFit 3. As you can see here on screen, really the biggest difference on its face is just the button itself. The button on the newer version is metal, whereas the button was plastic on the previous generation. But in terms of navigating through the different uh, data points and the menus, it's essentially the same. You'll just have one button to navigate through the different menus. Long pressing the button will open up a variety of other menus that you can navigate. Additionally, it does use the same half inch by half inch display. It is extremely tiny, however, it is clear in bright sunlight. Uh, it does suffer a little bit in lower lights as this display is always on, but it is not backlit. The device is lightweight, it has a very thin profile, you'll hardly know that it's even there on your wrist. You can purchase the device in two different sizes. There is a small to medium size and a large size. On the side of the box there is kind of a sizing chart where you can put your wrist on to see, you know, how it may Measures. I would recommend that for most people that they go with the large, even my wrist being a fairly small wrist, had a little bit difficulty fitting into that small to medium size, so definitely go for the large if you're in question. Now again, because this is a bare bones basic fitness tracker, we are going to get some limited features and functionalities. In terms of sensors, there's only one onboard sensor, and that is an accelerometer to detect your movement. You're going to get limited daily smart features, which include connectivity to your app through Bluetooth. Uh, you'll also have built-in weather information, a find my phone option from the watch, uh, and it will be compatible with both iPhone and Android. Now in terms of fitness tracking features, you will get a step counter which will track your active and um, all day steps. You'll get a move bar which will uh, kind of detect if you've been in inactive for a certain period of time and it will remind you to get up and stand and walk around. You'll also have automatic goals which will automatically calibrate and adjust based on your activity levels over the last few days. This does have sleep monitoring, more on that here in a moment. Uh, this will also track your all day calories and distance and intensity minutes, in other words, minutes that you've spent moving around at a moderate level. We need to talk about what's missing from this fitness tracker because obviously if it's an entry level cheaper device it is going to be lacking in certain features that other more expensive fitness trackers are going to have. So the first feature that this does not have is built-in GPS for tracking your distance for runs and cycling. Now this does estimate your distance for something like running using a built-in accelerometer. Uh, this is a movement sensor inside the device that will estimate your distance based on on how many steps you've taken. The second feature that this does not have, and this is kind of a key feature, is that it does not have a built-in optical heart rate sensor. That means the device does not have the ability to track your active or resting heart rate native to the device. Now the reason why that's important is because your heart rate data is often used to help calculate uh, your calorie expenditure, how many calories you've burned throughout the day. So again, without that built-in optical heart rate sensor, it has to estimate your calories burned throughout the day based on how much movement it's detecting on that uh, accelerometer that is on board. So again, it's an estimate. It's not going to be nearly as precise as the fitness trackers that are out there on the market that have the built-in optical heart rate sensor and can track your heart rate throughout the day. Now, one of the big questions that has been asked is, does this device have the ability to pair with an external heart rate sensor? So at the very least, for active exercise, would you be able to pair this with a Bluetooth chest strap or an ANT Plus chest strap or armband in order to get that heart rate data? And unfortunately, the answer is no. So Garmin does have an ANT Plus and Bluetooth chip in this device. It's listed on their uh, website as part of the specifications of the device. However, they have locked down that feature and as of the release of this video, this device is unable to pair with any sort of external heart rate sensor. So that means you're not going to be able to get any sort of heart rate data on this device, period. And that to me is, you know, a very unfortunate thing. I, at the very least, would have wished that even if they didn't have a built-in uh, optical heart rate sensor that this would be able to pair with an external heart rate sensor. And the reason why it's 
it's disappointing is because on previous generation models, they did offer the uh, ability to pair with external heart rate sensors, and that's something that they've taken away with this new generation product, and so it feels more like a step back in my opinion. Now, very quickly, I want to give you guys uh, my opinion on some of the all-day uh, features that this offers. Uh, the first one being sleep tracking. Since this does not have the ability to track your resting heart rate, specifically while you're sleeping, obviously, uh, that's going to impact its ability to detect your sleep in the first place. It's not looking at any of your heart rate data because it doesn't have that ability. It just tracks your movement. And because of that, it's a little bit limited on its ability to track your sleep. So for sleep tracking, uh, this is not going to be uh, a preferred device, in my opinion. It's going to give you a very rough estimate of how you slept, uh, but it's not going to be anywhere close to the accuracy that you're going to get from a fitness tracker that does sleep tracking using both your heart rate data and your movement versus what this does, which is just looking and analyzing your movement in order to detect your sleep. Um, now, in terms of step counting, the accelerometer on this has actually been quite good. Uh, it's agreed with all the other devices that I've compared it against, which include other Garmin devices, uh, the Garmin Phoenix 5, the uh, Garmin VivoActive, of HR and even my Apple Watch and the step tracking on this tends to agree with those devices you know within a uh, mar an acceptable margin of error so yeah for, for step tracking if you're looking just for basic step tracking this is going to be a decent device now with that step tracking accuracy also comes uh, some distance accuracy and so it does do a decent job tracking or estimating I should say your all-day distance because even devices that are GPS watches don't have their GPS turned on all all the time. They estimate your all-day distance based on your movement and the steps that it calculates that you've taken, and this device does the same thing. It's estimating your all-day distance by looking at that accelerometer, looking at your movement, and looking at your all-day steps. And so I've found that this tends to be pretty accurate uh, in looking at both your all-day steps and your all-day distance. Now for gym-based exercise, for CrossFit boot camp style exercises, um, weightlifting strength training exercises, this is going to be a really poor choice because the built-in accelerometer is not designed to track those kinds of exercise. The built-in accelerometer on this is mostly just for step-based exercise. So if you're looking to track uh, any sort of gym-based exercise, this device is going to fail miserably. It's not going to give you uh, an accurate calorie count, um, and it's not going to give you a good representation of your workout. So I would not recommend this for those of you who are looking to track gym-based exercise. Uh, now in terms of jogging, if you're wanting a watch that's going to track something like jogging, running, walking, this actually did pretty decent. So I did take this on a treadmill, uh, did take it for a short run, and it agreed with the treadmill data. Um, you know, the step tracking on this estimated my distance pretty accurately. It also agreed with my Apple Watch, which I was wearing on my other wrist when I did this run. Uh, and so in terms of tracking your distance for running, this does a fairly good job estimating that. So if you're looking to uh, have a fitness tracker that just gives you basic information about your run or your walk, uh, and just something that give, gives you a rough idea of your distance, and the calories burned, this will do that. However, I want to note that without the heart rate sensor, again, you're going to get a little bit of a discrepancy uh, in the calories burned. My Apple Watch was consistently telling me that I burned more calories than the Garmin device was telling me uh, because the Apple Watch was able to look at and analyze my heart rate data and use that to factor in some of my calorie burn, whereas the Garmin VivoFit 4 doesn't have, obviously, that heart rate data, so it was not factoring that in on my calorie burn, so it was estimating it purely on uh, the number of steps and the distance that it estimated I ran. The device is being advertised by Garmin as being waterproof, um, but that does not mean that this will track swim exercise. So yes, while you can wear this with you into the pool or into the shower, it's not going to track uh, any sort of swimming or water sports activity like other Garmin devices are. So it just allows you to be able to wear this with you into the pool and it will track that basic motion and maybe give you some, some uh, credit towards your all-day calories burned, but it's not going to actively track those swimming exercises. Okay, so here's my final assessment assessment of this product. Because it does not have a built-in optical heart rate sensor allowing you to track your resting or active uh, heart rate information, and because it doesn't even allow you to pair with any sort of external heart rate sensor, uh, I, you know, I'm really disappointed by that fact. Now, because this doesn't have GPS, it's only going to be able to estimate your distance for step 
based cardio sports like jogging and hiking. It's not going to be able to uh, give you any sort of estimate of your distance for something like cycling. And so again, that's kind of disappointing. Um, and so in my opinion, uh, because it's lacking some of the key features that you can get on even cheaper devices, I would actually not recommend this fitness tracker for anyone. Um, you know, I've been accused of being a Garmin fanboy in the past and I am a big fan of Garmin products, but this is one product where I feel like Garmin has disappointed. Uh, it feels like they've taken a step back from products that they've released already. And so I would encourage you guys to check out actually in the description, some other reviews that I'm going to link where you can pick up cheaper devices that actually have either built-in GPS or uh, a built-in optical heart rate sensor. So you know, Garmin kind of dropped the ball here uh, on this particular fitness tracker. I'm not exactly sure why they didn't include, at the very least, an optical heart rate sensor or the ability to pair with an, uh, an external sensor, but they didn't do that. And in my opinion, that's a big fail on their part. And, you know, um, it, it's, it's a big enough fail where I don't recommend this device. Now, if you disagree with me, by all means, there's going to be a link in the description below where you can go pick this up from Amazon. So let me know in the comments below if you agree or disagree with my review of this product. Let me know if you have any questions. I'll be happy to answer those in the comments section below. Hey guys, thanks for watching. My name is Eric and I'm the Techie Agent. We'll catch you next time.